All right, guys, thanks for joining me once again. Here I am in my car. Seems like I've made a number of these videos lately. It's not really my first choice to do it in this location, but uh, it's the message that matters, and I, so I hope you don't forget that. And I hope you pay very close attention to what I'm about to say. There's a lot of people who are very disappointed in life. Uh, they're very discouraged. They're asking questions. And, and I think a lot of that is because in our culture today, there's so much confusion. The, the, the messages have been distorted. The uh, signals have been mixed. And, uh, well, a lot of morals have just gone out the window. Everything that was said to be good and right is now wrong and uh, bad. Everything has been turned upside down on its head, and it's just been, become very disconcerting for everyone, and I think most especially probably for young people, the one who's, ones who still find themselves in school and, and um, the ones who are you know, going to college. But I think even adults are affected by this in, in many ways, and uh, I, don't, I don't like to see that. And what's even worse is when it happens to the people closest to you. So I have a few things to say about life. I want to I want to clear some things up, and I think that um, uh, sharing the thoughts of others will shed some light and bring some clarity. At least I hope so. So let me know what you think. Leave a comment down in the uh, comment section below. And uh, once again, don't forget to check out the description also. So anyway, let me start off with with this. And I, I read this this morning, and I think it'll it'll speak volumes. Uh, Someone once said, if life be miserable, it is painful to endure. If it be happy, it is frightful to lose. And this is the, the, this is the problematic paradox that we are faced with with life, isn't it? Well, if it's, you know, some people think it's completely miserable, right? And, and so we just have to endure it. And nobody really wants to do that. And, but then at the same time, if you're, when you're when you're so focused on on being happy and achieving happiness at the same time you're also afraid of losing the very things that helped you acquire it and and that in itself could make you miserable so oftentimes the pursuit of happiness is is counterproductive and it won't really help you that much in the end it could just make you more miserable does that mean that we focus on just accepting the miseries of life as being the reality I don't think so. I, I just do not think so. And here's why. Uh, William James once said, if this life be not a real fight in which something is eternally gained for the universe by success, it is no better than a game of private theatricals from which one may withdraw at will. He's not suggesting that you take a horrible way out. He's just saying there has to be a reason uh, that we go through what we go through, and that something is worth enduring, and there is something that will last eternally. And uh, I think that we, we need to keep that in mind. Uh, so I just recently finished reading a book called Candide, written by Voltaire. I've talked about this in another video. I didn't go into great lengths about it, but Candide is this, um, is this young man who... Um, falls in love with this young woman named uh, Kunagonde. And I think I've said that name right. I've looked it up. I've really worked on trying to pronounce her name right, but I, I think it's Kunagonde. And it's really weird. It's a bizarre, it's a bizarre, I'll, I've obviously put the name on the screen, but anyway, he falls in love with her and he gets, he gets caught kissing her. And then he's like basically banished from her life. And so, you know, it's a love story, but he, this whole book is about Kunigonde and Candide trying to make their way back to each other, at least, at least on Candide's part. I don't know that she's necessarily aware of it, but it's, it's a preoccupation for him. And he, he suffers many trials and vicissitudes. He has many, he has different people in his life throughout the book. And, uh, and, and the, and the two questions that really is the central theme of the book is, and because, because there's two different philosophers that he keeps company with at different times in this book. And the two questions that get uh, brought up by either one of them, or at least by Condé to them, is d does everything in life really work out for good? Will everything result in something good in the end? 
or is life just one long, miserable, wretched experience that really has no meaning? And in the end of the book, the question the questions are not really solidified. The, or the answers to the questions are not solidified. It's kind of left to the imagination because it's open to interpretation. Likewise, it is with you. It's what you make it. And uh, I thought it was just a brilliant book, but these quotes, quotes reminded me of that, that uh, it, there's, there is something to, to, of value to it. William James also said, the great use of life is to spend it for something that outlasts it. Well, that's why we that's why we love and that's why we care so much about about holding something close to us that um, means so much and when we lose it, it it hurts so much you know look at uh, breakups divorces death anything that takes rips someone out of our life it, it's hard to replace but we feel like when we're in the throes of it that uh, it's it's absolutely eternal well in, in a way it is it is but um, this, that's why we spend our, that's why we spend all this time and all this energy on love. And, um, you know, it, it, but there's more than one way of looking at things. I mean, there are other things that outlast life itself and it all really comes, do, it does come back to love. It's loving things. It's love, not loving things in a material sense, but, um, uh, acts of service, Acts of service, uh, making a difference in someone else's life, putting a smile on someone else's face, being an encouragement to other people, showing loyalty, uh, exhibiting virtue, high moral standards and behaviors. These things are eternal. And these things outlast life as we know it here, in the here and now. And that's what we need to focus on. So Samuel Johnson said, life like every other blessing, derives its value from its use alone, not for itself, but for a nobler end the eternal gave it, and that end is virtue. That's what I was just saying here. Um, and then going beyond that, I'll, I'll, I'll give you this last quote and make my remarks on it. He said, human, uh, Henry Mencken once said, human life is basically a comedy. Even its tragedies often seem comic to the spectator, and not infrequently, they actually have comic touches to the victim. Happiness probably consists largely in the capacity to detect and relish them. You might wonder why I brought that one up. Well, I, I do think it's important on, on focusing on virtue, all the things I've already mentioned, focusing on the positive, and, and looking into how you can wear out your life basically in the in the service of others rather than pursuing happiness you find it by wearing yourself out it's good to it's it's important to get your rest but it's more important to not rust out and i do believe that that we do need to to really concentrate our efforts on on the virtues of life and here's the thing i could make a very long video on on all of those things. But I, I figure you're a pretty smart person and I have a feeling you have an idea of what virtue is and it's something that if you're on the fence about, you should explore. Start looking it up. Don't rely upon me to give you all the answers for that. But chances are you innately already have a sense of what virtue is and that's what you need to live for. If you don't, your life will be a confused mess. All these people that you see in this world right now, that are that are imposing their will on the masses of people who just want to have a comfortable peaceable meaningful existence the the, the people who are imposing their will they will fizzle out they will fade away and they certainly don't have anything eternal stored up okay so don't Focus too much of your effort on them. You, we do have to confront those things. We do have to fight against them. But it's worth it. It's worth it when you stand up for what's right. But going back to this last quote, it's also important to keep a sense of humor. And that doesn't mean that we laugh at all this stuff. It's just that we we're able to identify the irony and the strangeness of all these things. And when we can do that, we can actually see the eternal. 
we can actually see God move. We can see the hand of God work. And it's almost as though he's speaking to you. And when you can, when you can find the humor in things, rather than focusing on how miserable something's making you, you can keep a brighter aspect. Here's, a, here's one little example. When my father passed away, it was obviously very sad. It was a very sad thing for us. And it's not something you really get over, you just kind of get used to. And um, we, you know, he was very, very loved and very much respected. And, and a lot of people relied upon him for direction. So he was, he, he was, when he left, there was a big vacancy. There was a big void. Well, he had a very Charlie Brown like personality. And we often compared him to Charlie Brown. Well, at his funeral, at the graveside, it started raining so hard. We looked at it and said, you know, that's just like dad. It's very Charlie Brown. This, you know, it would, if Charlie Brown was to have a funeral, it would rain, wouldn't it? And we did find the humor in it. And none of us, I don't think any of us look back on that moment and think how sad that was that it was started raining like that and, and everybody kind of hid for the hills. But I don't know, at least some of us laughed about it. And it's a great way to go through life is to, you know, and it's not always that easy. I'm not saying that you could always do that. But think about it. Where can you apply it? It'll make a di big difference. Live for the, live for exhibiting virtue. Live in the service of others. Understand the eternal value of everyday life. The eternal value of everyday life. And learn to detect the irony in the humor that goes on all around you. And I think that'll make a big difference. All right, guys, I got to get going. I do have a lot to do. Now I'm in a hurry because I've taken too long. But I thank you for joining me. I appreciate you watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Share this with others too. All right, I've enjoyed it. Have a good one. Be wise.